It's the Breakmaster here, and I'm here today to give you my Don Grove on three first impressions. So apparently they just freaking skipped two and just went on to three. Alright then. So when it comes to Don on Rope on three, uh the first two episodes came out, they're not bad. I have a theory on who is actually the killer going on in the series right now too, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But let's just talk about like the animation and other things that I want to kind of um, dive into real quick. Now, when it comes to the animation, it's pretty similar to the first one, or if not or identical. I mean, you don't have that little like animation scene death when everybody, you know, when someone like gets caught and then they die and they got to get in the chair or whatever happens to them, you know. Like I like that little aesthetic that they had back in the first one. They don't seem to have it, I guess, in this one here. It's just they do have some gruesome deaths though, because somebody had to die today. It was this girl, I don't remember the name, kind of don't matter now seeing as she's dead, but it really affected the freaking white haired with the sword falling deeply in despair, dude. I, again, I don't even remember his name because honestly, there's I, like the characters, I mean, the characters, God, a lot of them are freaking annoying and, 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 and stupid. And for people that are in a group that's all about freaking hope, they got no hope. Like, so, like I'm not gonna lie. This series so far, this is series in Don Rope in general, like, I'm not gonna lie, some of this stuff just don't make no sense to me, but I'm not gonna get, like, dive deep into that right now, because it's just, I had a whole conversation, I had to stop the video sometimes, just to, just to, just to vent and, and talk to my brother, because me and my brother watching this, and we're just like, some of this stuff just really is not making sense, like, I, I don't know, it's just kind of ridiculous. Like, how can you be in a freaking, uh, 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 future hope group here, and it's trying to fight despair, but you guys fall in despair just like that? Especially the freaking white-haired freaking dude with the sword, y'all you know, telling Nagi to go die because you know he th he thinks that Nagi was the one that killed that girl. And that's the thing, most of the freaking people there think that Nagi was the one that actually killed her. Which honestly, I, no, I, I highly doubt he did that. Nagi is the man of hope. You gotta believe in Nagi, or you believe in no one. So yeah, when it comes to the characters too, um, the only ones I can remember right now is like the great Gozu. He's the one that left a really big mark on me. I like I like that guy. I think the reason why I like him though is because he was the one that didn't think or didn't want to prosecute Nagi just on the spot. He's like, just wait a minute, son. Everybody else is like, that's the dude. And this person's other dude. This is some rowdy dude here that's trying to beat up everybody. He's the one that came up to freaking Nagi and just said, I'm gonna punch him right in the stomach after he freaking put the freaking handcuffs on him. I was like, bruh, get that trash out of here. But the thing is, Great Ghost is like, calm yourself or you can have to deal with me. And the same could be said for everybody else and stuff. I'm just like, the Great Gozu, he's great. Now, concerning the second episode and everything and um what's actually going on here apparently you know there's a sleeping gas that administers every you know so often when it happens that's when the killer can actually be active and that's when he, the killer will go and kill somebody and then they got to figure out who did it so basically dongaropon 3 is pretty darn similar to dongaropon 1 where all the characters are confined in one area and they got to figure out who the killer is and monokuma is playing all the games on them and you know the last one standing is the supposed winner and also it's also being broadcast live so everybody can see it just there's different circumstances so yeah and one other thing is that everybody has like a bracelet on them and there's like an action that can activate this poison that will automatically kill him so like for nagi he can't run at all while he has a brilliant bracelet on if he runs he dies um there's this black dude in here with a super high-pitched voice and it sucks that he died but at the same time i mean he, i don't know he i i, I, I shouldn't even talk about that let me just i i, I just this character just kind of throws me off Kind of makes you feel like, you know, it's, it's, a little, it's a little racist, but, you know, I, I'll leave it alone. But, you know, his weakness was that he was he can't uh, see his, like, friends fight or, or people you know, fight around him. And you only see confrontation. And when that happened, because, you know, the route of you ended up having to try to, you know, go at somebody, that ended up killing him. I heard apparently people are suggesting that Katagiri's, uh, you know, weakness or, you know, action that he she can't do is actually talk to Nagi. And I kind of see that because she actually didn't speak up or say anything after she had the bracelet on, you know, when it comes to Nagi. So, I don't know. Something is happening. And so, at the end of the episode, we see Nagi, we see this wheelchair girl, we see the great Gozu, and we see Asahina. They're all together in this one room. Everybody goes to sleep because the sleeping gas, you know, is, is administered. And the, now the killer can actually be active. When Nagi wakes up, he has blood on his hands, and Asahina is freaking dead. And that right there... Oh, made me so freaking mad. Asahina is the freaking best girl. She is waifu for laifu. And now her laifu is gonzu. I have no clue if that make any sense, but we going with it. And it just really, and I'm not gonna lie, it really sucks that, you know, one of the OGs for the first series gotta get killed like that. And they blaming it on Nagi again. Because, I mean, hey, he has blood on his hands. It does look kind of suspicious. But I really don't think 
he killed her. One, I mean, he kind of just woke up and had the blood on his hands all of a sudden. Unless he was just like some sleepwalking killer. It was like, ah, it's time to die. And then he just starts killing somebody. Nah. And so then who who could it be? There's only two people that was actually in the room with them, which is the great Gozu and the wheelchair girl. This wheelchair girl is actually, you know, kind of suspicious. And here are my reasons why. One, you know, she's the one that actually, you know, made the whole security system and all this stuff like that. And then she kind of made the excuse of, oh, someone hacked from within and everything. And, you know, they got hacked into her system. And that's how Monokuma was even in there and all this other stuff. But I, it, honestly, if if it could be anyone, it could be her because, I mean, I, she could be the one hacking inside. I mean, she's the one that created the whole thing. So it'd be very easy for her to just let Monokuma just slide right in, slide in the DMs. Another thing, she's also in a wheelchair. You would think that, you know, a wheelchair person ain't gonna kill nobody. He ain't gonna do nothing. She seems very frail and everything as well. Like, she ain't gonna do nothing, but that's, you're wrong. You're wrong. I suspect you the most. Another thing that was also, to me, was a bit of a hint. She didn't allow anyone to touch her either. I mean, yes, I know she's shy and all that stuff, but she's like, no, 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 bro, don't touch. And so I'm just like, I don't know. Something about that kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. And not only that, her attire is a bit heavy as well. Like she could easily hide some stuff. Not to mention she's in a chair. Like there's a lot of things she can do. And there's obviously weapons she even has on her when it comes to her freaking wheelchair. But I suspect it's the wheelchair girl, but it could be some outside character. I really don't think the great Gozu did anything, honestly. I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't suspect him in the slightest. He's just he's just great. But watch how I can beat him and he's gonna be like, aha, I'm not great, I'm evil. <laughs> so yeah, I do apologize for uh not remembering the names like that. I'll do better with that next time. And just these characters, man, like I said, they just there's a lot of them I don't like, and it just like they 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 irk me, alright? They they irk me. The great ghost is the only one. I'm like, great ghost, you you great son, you are great. So yeah, leave a comment below and tell me who you think is the killer. Do you think it's the great ghost? Do you think it's the real chill girl? Do you think it's some outside source that somehow got into that room that was like barricaded? Because you know, great ghost who did barricade that um that 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 room. So you know, maybe there's another entrance. I, I don't know. You now tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Like like this video and subscribe if you want to see some more impressions reviews from me, the Breakmaster. Just the Breakmaster. And until then, people, break out. Uh.